The Chicago City Treasurer presents the Financial Empowerment Summit, featuring powerful financial advice from multimillionaire stars and experts. This is There's a Place in Finance for You. Are you ready to connect folks with some great jobs in the financial services industry? I, I'm, I'm not, I mean, look, if you're with the company, I want to hear the company shout out. Like, if you have the best company in the room, let me hear you say, yeah. If you're gonna hire the most people from your booth, let me hear you say, yeah. If you're the best employee and you're about to score the best job in this room, let me hear you say, yeah. All right, the optimism, I love it. So we are so excited for you all to be here. I understand that we have more than 60 companies here and there are more than 1,700 people who are registered for this amazing career fair. We are so thankful and grateful that the city treasurer, Chicago city treasurer, Melissa Conyers Irvin, is putting this together for so many people okay. in our Chicago area to get them I mean, into I'm the financial like service industries. We are so excited. Building wealth today for tomorrow. This is going to be a huge success. I'm already seeing people here in their suits. People have their resumes on hand. So I know folks are going to get some really good jobs. Yeah. We've got an amazing panel discussion for you today. But I, before I get into it, we got to introduce the woman of the hour, the person who put this big event together. This is huge. I'd say this is unprecedented. So I need you all first to first of all, come to the stage. Tell your future employer, give me one second. Well, may, maybe keep talking, but if you're not talking to your future employer just yet, come on up to the stage and sit in these amazing chairs because I have to introduce you to this amazing woman, the woman who put this all together, the woman who is spectacular. She's doing so much for the city. Our city treasurer, Chicago city treasurer, Melissa Conyers Irving. Good morning, Chicago. Good morning, Chicago. This is so exciting. I am just super excited. There's a saying of peacock happy. I am peacock happy on this morning. And so we just want to first welcome everyone to our first in-person career fair we had a career fair for our first last year, but that was virtual with the pandemic. So how many of you know it just feels good to be in person? Let's give that a hand this morning. Thank you so much to the beautiful Samantha Chapman for that beautiful introduction of ABC7. We thank them for the work that they do here in Chicago in helping us to sponsor this event. And certainly when we think about building wealth today for tomorrow, it is all about unlocking the potential of individuals to take control of their financial future. And when we look at the career fair on today, you will find a selection of career readiness workshops as well as opportunities to engage with employers right here on site. And tomorrow, Saturday's programming offers free in-person financial empowerment for all Chicagoland residents, small business owners, as well as entrepreneurs. We will have seminars on accessing capital, financial planning, credit building seminars, as well as planning for home ownership and wealth building opportunities. Now you may notice this morning, we did our ribbon cutting and the ribbon was pink. Let's be mindful that tomorrow, Saturday, October 1st, marks the beginning of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So women be certain to get your mammograms. Now, thank you for joining us. We are about to get started. We have an awesome panel here with us today. So what I'm going to do is take a seat. I hear a lot of talking. That means that jobs, jobs, jobs are being had. Okay, everyone hears me just fine? Mm -hmm. So good to see this beautiful panel here with us this morning. At the start of our career fair, 
So first, I want to introduce our panel on this morning. I'll start all the way to my right. We have Annie, can you, I don't hear myself, but you all do hear me. Okay. We have Annie Sealis, who is the CEO, wave your hand, Annie, of R. Sealis and Company. That's what I thought. We have Hello, hello. We have Annie Sealis, CEO of R. Sealis and Company. We have Leo Harmon of Mesero Investment Banker. We have Felicia Foster from BMO Harris, Managing Director. Well, that's a long title. Managing Director, Head of U.S. People, Process Change, Inclusion, and Talent integration. We have Kelly Lopez to my left, Kelly Lopez Clark, Vice President, AML, KYC, Chase Wealth Management for Peace. Let's give Kelly a hand. And we have Bavon Joseph. Wave your hand, Bavon. He is Aren't you the founder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The founder of Greenwood Project college readiness program. Let's give our panel a hand on this morning. Oh, I have volume, I feel great now. <laughs> All right, so let's dive right in so we could get this day started. I have a three-part question, but I'm actually going to make it a two-part question because as I look at the three women that are up here with me, I'm going to start with the gentleman. First, Leo from Mesero, and then Bavon. I want you to answer these two questions for me. Certainly, we know everyone's career journeys and paths are different. How did you get started in your career, and can you tell us about your career journey? And in that, can you also answer the question regarding licensing and certification requirements? Is, uh, can everyone hear me? How about now? There you go. Okay. Um, it, it's a great question. Um, you know, my career path uh, started a long time ago. Uh, I actually, uh, uh, a lot, like a lot of folks here, started uh, with an internship um, at Caterpillar in Peoria, Illinois. And during that internship, they, um, I was working in the treasury department, and they started to bring money in-house to manage themselves. And I did not know a lot about the asset management business. I knew I wanted to have a career in finance, uh, but I didn't know much about um, the, 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 the corporate finance or the capital finance side of the business. Um, and working there over three summers, I really got the bug to want to be an investor. Uh, so from there, I went on to grad school, got an MBA from Duke, um, stayed down in North Carolina working for a money management operation there uh, before moving back home to Chicago. Um, I'm a Southside kid and was attracted to come back home and um, have had various levels of experiences, uh, starting with a very small boutique firm uh, called the Kenwood Group, which is uh, no longer here, but was founded in Chicago by a lovely woman named Barbara Bowles. Shout out to Barbara. Um, who hired me and took a chance on me um, early in my career. Uh, from there, progressively moved to um, different opportunities with Allstate, uh, managing um, large cap portfolios there. And now, currently, um, I am the, uh, the CIO of our uh, equity group at Mesero Financial. Yeah, for me, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Pull it up. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah, for me, my career in finance was very non-traditional. So I lived in New York for about 20 years. My first job, I just happened to be in the trading floor at Chase, actually. And um, I saw about 500 people yelling and screaming all day long. And I had no idea what they were talking about. They were traders. And I was just really obsessed with learning more about what they were doing. And for me, it was all like self-learning, getting mentors on the trading floor. But um, very non-traditional. I did not have a network or social capital, you know, people who were from the business. As you can hear from my accent, I'm not from Chicago. 
So I originally grew up in Trinidad and moved after high school to New York and spent 20 years there. But yeah, my career really just happened to me. You know, I didn't go out seeking a career in finance. I knew nothing about finance. And, um, but I fell in love with the environment and trading. Started trading eventually, managing technology at trading firms and hedge funds and banks. Been in Chicago for about 11, 12 years. My wife's from Chicago. Uh, she also had a 20 year career on the compliance side. But um, the theme throughout our entire career was a lack of diversity that we saw. So we were on trading floors and nobody looked like us. And we always wondered why that was. So you know, fast forward 20 plus years later, we started the Greenwood Project to really be the organization I wish I had 20 years ago. You know, so that's kind of um, on the certification side, I went technology, so a lot of um, Microsoft certifications and Cisco stuff like that. So I ended up last real job, I guess, before Greenwood was managing, I was a CTO at a hedge fund here in Chicago, managing all the trading technologies and stuff like that. So um, very non-traditional path for finance. And what I want you all to pay attention to on the stage is the diversity of this stage. And I see some young people over to my right. Oh, he was about to bite into his bagel and just stopped. How cool is that? But I see the young people to my right and I want them to see the diversity on this stage to let them understand that this can be them. And this is really one of the priorities of this weekend. We want residents, we want young people to see that this industry is not far-fetched. And so as I pass the microphone to the ladies that are on the stage with me, I want them to answer two questions. The first question the same about your career journey and path, but also tell us what advice you would offer women seeking a career in asset investment banking or women who are returning to their career after a parental leave. Let's start with you, Annie, and then we'll do Felicia and pass it to Kelly. Sure. Um, can, can you hear me? Should I just hold it? Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you for this event. Thank you for having me on the panel. It's amazing. It's so energizing to see so many people here. Um, like some of the men on the stage, I uh, entered a career in finance by luck. It wasn't something I sought out. I didn't know anything about different careers in finance. I didn't necessarily think it was for me. Um, but I knew I wanted to live in New York, and New York's very expensive. Um, and I was very lucky to have been given my first opportunity in finance through a family friend. Um, it's one of the reasons I feel so strongly about the need to pay it forward. Um, had I not gotten lucky and had that opportunity, uh, I probably would have moved on. Um, and I think it's really, really important that everyone understands that there's a lot of different types of jobs in finance. There's a lot of different opportunity. Um, and it's not something to be intimidated by. It's something to seek out. Uh, and it's an amazing, amazing journey. And you know, all of us up here in finance but in very, very different roles um, with very, very different skill sets and networks. And, um, you know, it, it can open a lot of doors. So um, I was very lucky to, to get my first opportunity. I entered a training program. I got exposed to a lot of different parts of the business. Um, and then I, I came across the opportunity to run my own firm uh, in 2015. And I thought, you know, I don't know many women running financial services firms. I'm not sure I can do this. I'm not sure it's for me. Uh, but at that point in my career, I had been lucky enough to surround myself with people who did believe in me and who were able to give me that push. So I think that that's really important. Uh, it's a great segue into answering the second part of your question, which is, you know, what advice would I give? Um, and for me, it's twofold. One is uh, absolutely surround yourself with people who are not only mentors, but, but sponsors who are going to fight for you, who are going to provide opportunity for you, who are going to believe in you. Uh, and then secondly, you have to believe in yourself. And, and I say this to young women because I see it in young women all the time. Constant self-doubt, counting themselves out. I don't know if I can do this. I took some time out. Uh, I, I've been at home. I, I've been out of the workforce. Don't do that. I, it's, it, you have skills. You have value. You have to just find the person who sees that in you and, and is going to provide that on-ramp for you and, and support you in that. So... Um, I wish I had learned it earlier in my career, but you know, having that confidence and knowing you're bringing something to the table that's going to make that uh, employer value you, I think you have to be your own champion. Okay, can you hear me okay? Well, I want to thank 
thank you so much for being here today and of course representing BMO, the yeah. leading sponsor today. Yeah. Um, and yes, my title is obnoxious, so please. <laughs> I did not come up with that title. Um, but as far as my career journey goes, I actually, I had a number of internships early on in my career, um, starting from high school. Um, and so but I didn't know I wanted to even move into financial services at the time. At first, I thought I wanted to be a radiologist. And I went to Percy Julian on the south side of Chicago, and they had a number of different uh, programs that you can get involved in. And so I was like, oh, I'll go into the medical field. Didn't want to do that. Um, so transition, and I actually had an internship at the Board of Trade. And at the time, they didn't have all these fancy computers um, in, on the trading floor. It was like paper all on the floor, just loud and obnoxious. And I was like, this is not it. Um, and then eventually, I landed an internship at PepsiCo uh, in their diversity and inclusion department. And that was just my spark. However, at the time of graduation, Usually, actually, it was around the recession, and they did a massive layoff, and so the opportunity didn't come available when it was time for me to graduate. So I was like, I need to get my foot in the door somewhere, um, and I did. I actually ended up landing at a small firm in Bloomington, Normal, Illinois, um, called Skyward, and it was a, a student information system, so train people in student information systems, but then realized... I do not want to live in Bloomington Normal. Like, I am a girl from the south side of Chicago. <laughs> I like my city life, and so relocated back to Chicago. And that's where I got my foot in the door at, at Harris Bank at the time. And believe it or not, I started as an executive assistant um, at BMO. And what was interesting about my progression at BMO was, one, I joined the company, and I said to my manager maybe three months in, I said, I'm just gonna let you know, this is not my long-term job. I don't wanna stay in an executive assistant position, but I will give you a reason to advocate for me. And so every job, and I've had about eight or nine jobs since I've been there for the last 13 years, and it's ultimately gotten me to where I am today. Um, and a lot of that has come from a lot of great sponsors and people that have really just said, Felicia, this is where you need to course correct. These are things you might wanna do differently. Here's how you navigate this corporate environment. Um, two, it was confidence. It was the ability of, of, that I had of myself and belief that I had of myself that I was capable of doing more. Um, and then, of course, it was just taking some, some calculated risk um, in my career. And so going back to the question, the second question around what would I do or what would I say to someone looking to go into the space is, it was a saying that I always live by, it's always be interested so you can become interesting. And it was the spirit about being curious, always being curious, be interested in people, be interested in learning new things. Because if you're always staying curious, you become that interesting person that people want to learn from. You can start to sow seeds into other people as seeds have been sowed into you. So that's what I would say as one of my nuggets of advice for women. I am so excited. That is So thank you for having me. Um, so I all, my start in finance was also not traditional. I actually started off in law in uh, art school and wow. graduated from law school. Wow. So I was first generation. Uh, no one, I had no idea what I was doing when I started. That's how I started. I was in art school. Um, and when I graduated from law school, uh, the legal market had completely changed. So there really weren't many legal jobs. And one thing that I always sought out was to uh, find a position that, where I'd learn new skills. So I actually went to a Navy's boot camp uh, in the Office of General Counsel. And very surprisingly, it was very much a compliance position, which is what I do now. And my uh, law degree was really a benefit. It was, there was not a lot of people with a law degree at that time that, was, that were coming into compliance. Uh, so I, uh, after the Navy, I went into uh, GE Capital uh, as a contractor. 
So it was, I, I went there because I liked the name, not even really knowing what I was going into. Um, but one of the things that it offered was regular hours. Uh, I was single mom. And I was able to uh, do drop off and pick up for uh, daycare, which was extremely important because uh, I really don't have family in the city. And uh, I, one thing that I've learned is uh, to always seek out and challenge yourself. Uh, there's many things that you'll, many challenges you will face, but to try to seek out opportunities within your um, role where you will uh, challenge yourself and learn new skills. Uh, many large corporations also have affinity groups. It will be the women's group, the um, Native American, uh, Black or East Asian, <clears throat> Latinx, where uh, it's a great networking uh, opportunity and just to learn more about where you are and uh, what opportunities they really offer. So typically, that's awesome. Let me say this for those that are listening and those that are out um, in the career aspect of the room. I was very, really intrigued when I listened to all five of our panelists say they never thought that they would be in finance. I want you all to really catch that. In order to really become successful in this industry, you do not necessarily have to start in high school, have to start in college thinking, this is what I want to do. You can have a career change. It is very possible as the heads nod on this stage. You need to know that this is an industry that you can have a career change. Very encouraged that we have young people here today because they can have a, a really a head start more than what the panelists have had on this stage. If you know listening to this panel today that you want to pursue finance, then you have a head start that many on this stage did not have. So we're looking for even greater things from our young people, especially our diverse young people throughout Chicago. So thank you for those answers and those comments and being honest that it is not necessarily what you intended to do. But when I look at these titles, can I just say them again? Remember that the panelists said that they did not think they would be in finance. Some of them did not start in finance. And we have a woman-owned firm, investment firm, who is the CEO that is sitting before us. We have a chief investment officer sitting before us. We have certainly um, the managing director. And some people may wonder, what is the managing director? Tell them what a managing director is in a very, very short. I want to answer it, but I don't want to answer it. So there, there's so many titles in the banking industry, but I report up to the C-suite. The managing director. Mm -hmm. We also have vice president and another CEO on the stage as well. So I want you all to pay attention that it is not too late, not too late for you to be a part of this. And if there is anyone taking pictures or recording videos, if there is anyone listening, it is not too late for you to join us today. We are at UIC until 3 p.m., but my mother always taught me the early bird gets the worm. So do not wait until 3 p.m. to join us. Join us now. All right, our next question. What are some key learnings and mistakes that you have made in your career? And we'll start with the ladies. I'll start to my left. Matter of fact, we'll just start with the whole panel. Let's start to my left and we'll make our way down to the right. I love that question. Learnings and mistakes. I think for me, um, all right. I think um, mistakes. So first of all, I tell young people that I work with high school and college, we all got to fall. I don't like to say fail. I like to say fall. And when you fall, fall forward. 
so you can learn from your mistakes or you know so-called failures. But I think early on I was trying to figure out everything on my own. I didn't ask for help. I didn't have again that network of people around me who were in finance, and it was all new to me. And I thought I had to figure it out on my own. And when you are a minority on a trading floor and nobody looks like you, that's another challenge. Like, should I even be here? Imposter syndrome, all that stuff, right? Yeah. So a lot of things I was dealing with, I didn't know I needed to ask for help. Now I ask everybody for help. Like, you can't shut me up now. I'm just asking all the time to learn, right? So I think um, that's one of the key things I learned about myself when I started Greenwood in 2016. That was a message to young people. You know, our, our motto at Greenwood is kids can't be what they can't see. If nobody says to you, this is investment banking, or this is what a chief investment officer does, you never know about it. So I work with young people who nobody's ever said to them, come learn about finance. Let me tell you about FinTech. Right, again, we are bridging that gap between that disconnect that these young people have. Right here in Chicago, Chicago is one of the major financial hubs in the United States. Right, there's a lot of great companies in Chicago that young people have never heard of. And we're introducing them to those brands and those careers and those pathways. So I think I've learned a lot about myself when I started Greenwood. Um, I've learned a lot about my career you know, journey as well. Uh, mentors was like a huge thing to me. Eventually I started getting a lot of mentors and it doesn't matter if you're in high school or college or I'm 44 years old, I still have mentors. I still need help. I'm still asking questions. Like never stop asking questions. And that's my message to young people. The other thing I'll say is, when opportunity comes, say yes and go we'll figure it out. That's my message to young, be ready, always stay ready. And that's one thing we preach at Greenwood Project is, we'll give you all the tools, we'll give you the access, we'll get you ready and bring you to the door of a BMO and a Morgan Stanley and a Chase. But you gotta go through that door and do the work and also keep the door open for somebody else. So that's kind of the, some of the key things I message to young people as well. That's right. So I think one uh, mistakes or balls, balls we're calling them. Uh, so I've always been a working parent. I worked throughout uh, college and law school and I was just busy. And I think I didn't connect with people as often as I would have liked and also didn't follow up follow up as much as I could have. Uh, but, you know, those opportunities continue to arise and you really will be surprised when you go to a networking event, something like this, at how few people actually do take that step and set up time, uh, a coffee, a Zoom call, phone call, whatever it may be. Uh, but you really do stand out uh, when you take those steps. And any small conversation uh, could lead to an opportunity. And <clears throat> many people, and myself included, uh, do not put the value and the time into themselves. Uh, be that maybe you need to learn additional skills, uh, maybe you need to uh, read more, Whatever it may be, take that course. Uh, I think when I have had the time and have taken the time to invest in myself, that's when I really have had uh, uh, much success. Uh, I would say a learning and a mistake. Uh, learning was never get too comfortable. <laughs> And, and, and I look at that holistically, more so not just about never get too comfortable in your role, like, all, like I said, always stay curious, stay learning, but also when it comes down to how you're compensated, right? Sometimes we get into the roles and we get new skills, we enhance our education, and then we get afraid of asking for more money or more compensation, and so I never get too comfortable. And that was a learning that one of my mentors and sponsors gave me early on was to challenge myself to one, go beyond what I'm used to and step out of my comfort zone to really en enhance my growth in my career development. 
And then a mistake I would say, and it kind of aligns to what was just mentioned earlier around an imposter syndrome sometimes and, and second guessing yourself or going so hard into your work that you, it becomes a liability to, you, to how you show up. And I, I use this saying, I have a lot of sayings, but it's like any strength overdone can become a liability. And that's more so, again, if you're so focused on, I gotta do more, I gotta do more, I gotta do more, and you're burning yourself out because you're trying to prove to people that you can do more or that you, um, you know, you, your, your standard is here and their standard is here, so you're constantly like trying to strive ab above that, that can become a liability to how you show up and the work to which your work product that you produce. And so that was a mistake I had to learn early on to say, give yourself some grace, understand that you're not gonna know everything at day one, nor is that the expectation, and that you're gonna always learn and grow. So as you begin to learn and grow, you can apply those learning and growth elements into the way to which you show up at work every day. And so that's my, my learning and mistake. I would say my learnings are very similar. Um, particularly in this business, you know, I've been in, I've been doing this almost 30 years now, and I'm still coming up the learning curve. It's not as steep as it was when I first started, but there are still things for me to learn every day. New asset classes, new ways of managing money, new companies, and you can teach an old dog new tricks, but you can't teach a dumb dog anything. <laughs> and so you have to constantly have intellectual curiosity and learn and evolve and grow. I'm still getting certifications, even though I've been in the business for 30 years. And, and so that's the biggest thing that I've learned, that my business is constant change. In order to keep up with young folks like these over here, I have to stay on top of my game and I have to continue to learn and grow. Uh, biggest mistake, probably the biggest mistake a lot of young smart people make in their career is hubris, overconfidence, thinking I knew everything. And I'm in a business where if you're good, you're right 51% of the time. If you're great, you're right 55% of the time. So imagine that. You get 55% on the test. You get 55% on the test, that's an F. That's right. You get 55% of your investments correct, you'll be a great investor. And so failing 45% of the time teaches you to learn from your mistakes, teaches you you don't know everything, it teaches you a lesson in humility. I, I tell a lot of young people in this business that you can be humble or you can be humbled and I have been humbled many times in my career, and I've had to learn from those mistakes and in order to overcome. Um, I love that. I'm just jumping right off that point. I think, you know, I'm sure all of us would agree we've made lots of mistakes in our career, and I think if I think about one of the larger mistakes I've made is uh, at the beginning of my career, not being willing to take the risk or voice the opinion. I think when there isn't anyone in the room that looks like you, and, and on a trading floor when I started my career, there were very, very few women and, and practically no senior women. Um, I think I always felt, wow, I'm just lucky to be here. Um, and I would encourage people to think of it more in terms of they are lucky to have you. And, and I think that that's a really important point and something that I spent a lot of years sort of keeping quiet in, in meetings and thinking, well, I kind of disagree with that guy, but he might know something I don't, and I'm just gonna sit here and be quiet. So um, I definitely think that that is, that is something I wish I had done differently. Um, I would tell you, and I know everybody up here would agree, that you can't make money if everybody thinks the same. So diversity of thought uh, diversity of experience, diversity of talent in the room is essential to every single organization here and their success. So you have value and the fact that you disagree or you come from a different place or you had a different kind of job before you came to finance, that's valuable and you need to, uh, to own that and, and I wish I had done that earlier in my career.
Now, I want to piggyback before we go to the next question. We asked about learnings and mistakes. Bavon made a statement. He said, to be ready and stay ready. Is that what you said? Yep. Be ready and stay ready. Well, there's a saying that the young people say now, that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Is that the saying? Right. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And then also, I think about something that you mentioned, Leo. We cannot be afraid of failure. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to the nuggets we have learned today. We cannot be afraid of failure. Leo mentioned that if you are successful 55% of the time, then you are a great investment officer. <laughs> Just listen to that. 45% of the time, you are expected to fail. Wow. And overcoming that, we know as women, that is a hard concept to accept, that failure is a part of life. But what we do, is that we have to keep going, we have to keep pushing, and remember that successes will outweigh the failures. So thank you very much for your comments on that. Now I have a two-part question. We just have two more questions, and this has been awesome. And as a matter of fact, I already have another thought for next year. I'm going to drive my staff crazy because next year I want to do a field trip for high school students to come and listen to this panel. This is going to be important. We have to start with our young people to understand that this is a career that they can pursue. So be on the lookout next year. But two part question right now. We talk about mentorships, and I know that a couple of panelists have spoken about mentors. Tell me what are some key attributes of the person that you should have as a mentor, but also, what are expectations of the mentee? And then, in addition to that, I guess I'm going to make it a three-part question. In the financial services industry, one of the things that we did not speak about earlier were internships. I think that goes with the question of mentorship, menteeship, and let's talk about internships. And let's go from the inside out today with this, for this question. We'll start with Felicia, move to Leo, Annie, and then Kelly and Bavon. Okay, yes. Uh-oh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, so I would say when I'm looking for, what I'm looking for in a mentor is really someone that I can trust uh, someone who's going to be authentic with me, um, transparent when it comes down to where they see my shortcomings, that they can call me out on that. Um, someone that helps me uncover the things I can't see myself. That's what I look for in a mentor. Um, when it comes down to the mentee flip side, similar to what was just said earlier about be ready, and, and it's more so being prepared um, and not coming into the room expecting someone to say, okay, this is the job I see you in. Even if you don't know what the job you're looking for to say, this is what I'm interested in. This is what I like to do. Here's how you can help me. Having some questions for your mentor is I think critical for one, establishing a relationship, but also for them to be transparent around who they are because that's really building a platform of, of, of trust and communication that can ultimately help this mentor help you um, in your career. As far as the internship goes, I'm, I'm like halfway queen of internships. Like I've, I've had about four or five since I was in high school. And so I would say, as we look at students today, internships are critical um, because it allows us to see how are you able to engage in the corporate environment as you are today? It builds some capabilities in that um, corporate environment as a uh, youth coming in, and it really helps you understand yourself um, as you move and, and, you know, past graduation, what to expect. Um, and so I would say they are critical. It is not a requirement, 
but it is definitely helpful in one, making you competitive uh, for an opportunity upon graduation. I, I would say a couple of things about mentorships and those types of relationships. I think Annie hit on it earlier when she talked more about sponsorship versus mentorship. You want to find people who can advocate for you, who can be in a room and vouch for your skills and your skill set. Not, not just someone who can give you advice, that's important too. Mm -hmm. But they have to be able to say, this is my person. I think they are great. And I think they will be capable of taking on this responsibility or moving to the next level. And if you have those types of people, particularly people who are um, higher in management that can recognize that in you, that's much more important to me than just having someone you can talk to on a day-to-day on -day basis. The second thing I would say about mentors is you, you should seek out as many mentors as you can. You should have, as you, as you see the diversity on this stage, you should have all types of mentors. You're gonna have folks that look like you. You're gonna have folks that are from the same region you're from. You're gonna have folks that went to your same school. They will all have different aspects. Folks that don't look like you will all have different aspects of advice about your career that can be helpful to you. The one thing that I will tell you is that nobody is looking for a mentee. We're not going around trying to figure out who can I mentor? <laughs> You have to step up and show initiative. You have to demonstrate that you're viable, that you are a person that we want to mentor. We have to see something in you that gives us confidence that if I sponsor this person and if I mentor this person, they are going to have great success because I can get them over the top. We're not looking to mentor someone who's just going to sit in the back of the room and not take on any initiative. So those would, those would be the two things I would say. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I can add that much more. I think they've made fantastic points. I love the idea about a mentor who's gonna challenge you to be better, to point things out, to help you. Um, I love the idea that as a mentee, you really need to ask the tough questions. It's, it's not a successful relationship if the mentor says, oh, go, you should get an internship, and the mentee says, okay, cool. It's a successful relationship if it's, here's what you need to do to get yourself prepared for an internship, and then the response is great. Can you help me find one? Or could you take a look at this resume? Or do you think if I apply for this one, it's a good fit? So I just would encourage everyone to, to make it very specific and put the energy into the relationship from both sides. And then I just echo, I think internships are so important. And I think if for no other reason, it, it really helps you close some professional skills gaps and just understand what you're supposed to wear or what time you're supposed to be at the office. Or uh, it, It's a safe space to make a lot of the mistakes and get a lot of the comfort with a professional setting uh, that can be so challenging when you're starting out your career. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that, uh, can you guys hear me? All right. I would suggest that when looking for a, a mentor, that it's best if you can, the best mentor-mentee relationships are something that grows organically. When you can, yes, you're going to ask your mentor for advice on set, uh, on jobs, on whatever, uh, but if you can connect with them over other things and actually have that organic uh, more robust relationship. I think that's the best uh, type of mentor you can find. Also be aware that you should have many mentors and some of them will be your staunchest allies and your biggest advocates. And some may be people that you just check in with when you run into each other. And that's okay. Um, so try to reach out uh, and don't be afraid to ask. It's but be beware, be aware of what you're asking for. When you come to someone and just say, "Do you have a job?" or "Can you do this?" 
uh, a lot of people will be like, oh, I don't have that, so I'm not sure what to do. Instead of approaching it as, can we have a conversation? That can give you the opportunity to build those organic relationships. And having, if you can, if you ask, can we have a conversation? A lot of people will be like, sure, that's like two minutes. Versus, uh, can you do this for me? So, and as a, that relationship grows, you can often be uh, included in their network and given other opportunities. Yeah, I would say, um Pretty much everybody's covered a lot of the things already, but this applies for mentors and mentees. I think feedback is a gift, it's not an expectation. Right? So not everybody can take feedback, that, and sometimes it's very constructive, but the young people that I meet, I have to humble a lot of them, and they've never been spoken to the way I speak to them because I'm preparing you for the real world. Like, that's my job. Right? So be okay with being uncomfortable. I'm gonna put you outside of your comfort zone for a reason, but I won't leave you there. Surround you with resources and help, right? So I think um, for me, when I sought out mentors in my career, you know, again, nobody's looking for mentees. <laughs> um, I've stalked people on LinkedIn, I've harassed them nonstop. And the reason I say that is because when they do wanna have a conversation about internships, that's all I do. I'm top of mind. So for a young person, for anyone, stay top of mind. Don't go to extremes, but I'm just saying, when an opportunity comes up, who am I thinking about? If Leo has been harassing me for like five weeks straight, Leo is top of mind. But when I call on Leo, he better be ready. Because opportunity doesn't go away, it just goes to the next person. Right, so another reason to always be prepared. And when you come to my meeting or you wanna to talk to 15 minutes, what's the agenda? Right. Because we are investing time in you. Time is precious. We can't get that back. And when we started Greenwood Project, we had five kids. This year, we had 200. I don't know every student anymore. We had five corporate partners in 2016. We have 91 today in multiple cities. And they want us in London. So there's opportunities for me to send young people from Chicago, from the South Side, to London. Are you ready for that when I call you? Right? So I can, for me, I always preach being ready. Internships, I could talk about all day long. I think internships are the key. And we don't start in college, we start in high school. High school juniors are learning about what Citadel does, what Mesero does. We're taking them there for lunch and learn opportunities. Because, you know, there's no lack of talent. What it is is a lack of opportunity, right? And it's up to the Greenwood Project and everybody on the stage and everybody in the industry, especially if you are a person of color, to reach back and help these young people understand what it takes to get in the door because I meet young people who tell me they want to be in private equity. I was like, do you even know what that means? No, but let me tell you the path to get there. And that might not be for you. So that's why internships, that's the way you test drive a job. And for students here today, don't feel like you need to show up on day one as an intern to solve all the company's problems. You're there to learn, right? Young people, I think, this is no knock to any college professors in the room. I don't think college is doing a good job of preparing young people for the world of work. They're not preparing them to be at work. 60% of our curriculum at Greenwood is to teach you how to be at work, how to dress, why social media matters, how to have a resume, how to do mock interviews, how to show up on time. You know, I tell every young person in our program on day one, if you're on time, you're late. Be there 15 minutes early. That's just a life lesson. And that helps. There are young people who've gotten full-time jobs because they were the first one there for that interview. And that's what the manager remembered. He was super early. So I think um, on the mentor-mentee thing, I said feedback is a gift. Take it as a gift, mm -hmm. right? Because not everybody's gonna give you feedback, but when you get it, understand that it's in your best interest. It's, help, it's there to help you learn and get better. And with the younger you are, it's sometimes harder to take feedback. But um, with Greenwood, we understand that what we do is not for every student. So we're very selective about who gets into the program. The kids who get in are open-minded, coachable, up for a challenge, wanna learn something new, and okay with being pushed into outside of their comfort zone. So internships, I would say, a key ingredient into everything that we do in life, I think. And for the adults in the room, there's a thing called returnships. You've heard of internships, there are returnships. 
if you've taken a break from the workforce and you want to go back in, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, they all UBS, they have programs where as an adult, you can go back into the workforce and join a rotational training program where you get paid for like a year, two years, and you land a job at a Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley in finance. So a lot of adults who want to like break into finance in your 40s, 30s, whatever, you can get into finance still because they have a returnship thing now like similar to internship for adults. So did you all hear that? If you're on time, you're late. We got that? If we're on time for a job interview, we are late. For everyone that's out there talking, having an opportunities to speak to employers, let's make certain that we get to those interviews 15 minutes at least ahead of time. Last question for the panel. And then if there's anyone that have questions, make your way to the front. We will allow a few minutes for questions. If anyone has questions, make your way to the front. Last question for the panel. Oh, I like this question as the last question. And we'll start from my right all the way to the left. When you wake up every morning, what gets you excited about the impact on the work that you do? Uh, that is a great question. Uh, I, I find my job so energizing. I'm so lucky to work with a group of people that is so invested in bringing more diversity to the financial services. I think we've found a way to do all things with impact uh, without any concession on the business side. Um, it feels to me like it's a real moment in time in corporate America where people are really advocating for kind of a new tomorrow on what the workforce looks like and what we care about and aligning our values with our business objectives. And I love being a part of it and I'm really, really excited about the future. Wow, that's a great question. Um, it's really hard to create impact in this in this industry I, I think one of the things that that drives me is that you know a lot of folks think oh you you're up here you make a lot of money you're and, and that's their motivation and my motivation is you know I work for folks that grew up like me you know I, I manage pension funds for school teachers and janitors and and when I do my job correctly, you know, they are going to have a better retirement. They're going to have a better pension. They're going to have a better life. And so that's one of the things that really motivates me about creating an impact every day. Uh, the second thing is, you know, being a kid that grew up on the south side of Chicago who didn't know anybody in this industry, I now have an opportunity to create access points for other people. We talk a lot about if you can see it, you can be it. Well, sometimes if you can't see it, you can still be it. But it makes it a lot easier if you can see it and be it. Uh, the biggest hurdle for diversity in our industry is not racism, it's nepotism. It's the fact that most of the jobs in this industry get filled by somebody's cousin or somebody's neighbor or somebody's son or somebody's friend. And nine times out of 10, that person looks just like them. And if you're in an industry that's already lacking in diversity, it perpetuates that. And so it, it, I think it's incumbent for folks like us to really create access points for, for kids and, and, and students and people who are seeking out opportunities in this industry um, to not only show them, but to help instruct them that there's a path forward. Yeah, I would say for me, there are some days, I'll be honest, I do not get excited. Um, and it's not because of what I know I can do and the impact I can make, but I just know that some people just don't get it sometimes. Um, and when you're in diversity, when you're in talent, like that that work doesn't come without controversy and it's just hard sometimes. But, but when I think and reflect on my own self-motivation, it kind of goes back to what you said, Leo Brown, 
looking back on where I came from and being the first to go to school and doing these things, like giving someone something to be inspired by, um, to aspire towards. Um, and in having the opportunity to go back to my alma mater, my high school on the south side of Chicago, and talk to students and say, this is what I do. And you have that ability to do the same thing because I started where you were sitting. Um, and so that gives me a lot of inspiration. But also the work that I do with, with helping to find jobs for diverse talent, to helping to develop talent internally, to ensure that the right people are on succession slates to reach those senior level opportunities, that they have the opportunity to build wealth. That makes me feel good. So because I sit in my seat, I not only have the opportunity to do that in my job, but to the point you made around tapping into my own diverse networks to pull people up is, is something that I think ultimately is an inspiration that I find for myself, but I think others also see it as well. I'll take a little different uh, approach. One of the things that uh, really gets makes me happy and excited about what I do is um, being able to provide well for my family, to be able to give him my son more opportunities than I had and more security. The other part of the things that I enjoy about my position is uh, to help prevent financial crimes. Uh, money laundering is one of the, I think it's the fourth largest industry in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And really, it does have a real effect on being able to uh, improve people's lives. So. I think, I think for me, um, I get to see the impact of what I do in real time. You know, earlier this week, you know, four of the students that we placed at Goldman Sachs got full-time offers. Kids from Chicago, right? So they'll be in New York, Chicago, and Salt Lake City. These are kids who had never heard of Goldman Sachs before Greenwood. And I also get to see the ripple effect of that job because I know them. I know their family. I know their parents. I know where they come from. I know now their little brother and sister wants to be like them. Representation matters, right? So I think I spent 20 years working on Wall Street in New York, and... The last six years have been the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. So I think Greenwood is my purpose, my passion. That's what I was put here to do. And I'm getting calls every day, emails every day, text messages from young people, over 500 we've worked with so far, who are telling me, hey, I'm moving to New York, I'm gonna work for Piper Sandler in sales and trading, I just got promoted, I'm going to London, kids from Inglewood, the west side. And when I say, hey, did you, what does your mom think? Did you call her? He's like, no, I called you first. So when you get stories like that, a message like that, what I do, you can't pay me enough to do what I do. And I get to work with Leo. We got two full-time employees from Greenwood Project, students work at his firm now. Awesome. Ten interns over the last two years. They're coming back next year to do more. So I get to work with individuals who get it. Not everybody gets it. Chase, Bimo, and Mezzaro, we've had either full-time employees, alumni, or interns at all three of them on this stage right here. So again, the ripple effect of what I get to do every day, and I'm not motivated every day, but we gotta be disciplined. Yeah. That's what I tell young people. You, every day, we don't wanna wake, we don't wanna get out of bed every day, right? But if you don't get up and do it, it doesn't get done. So I preach discipline, motivation is gonna come, right? And my motivation is these text messages and these emails and these calls that I get, and I, ran, I run into them randomly on the street, and their parents know me, right? So I think that's helped us serve now over 700 kids in the last six summers. And I didn't set out to make this my job at all. I literally thought we were gonna help five kids every summer. But again, it turned into a career and a thing for me that I just can't see myself doing anything else. So I think for me getting up every day and knowing that I can positively impact the life of a high school kid in Chicago or a college kid somewhere else, I mean, that's priceless to me and I just literally can't see myself doing anything else. Before we close out, any questions? Any questions from the audience, attendees? Yes. Uh, 
Um, I have a question for you. Um, so you said the DAW internship, where is that located in Chicago or is it? So this year we had students in about five different cities across the United States, Chicago, Denver, New York, Salt Lake City, LA. Um, by the way, our application opened today for 2023. So greenwoodproject.org, you can start applying now, but it can be in multiple US cities and eventually we'll be sending kids to London as well. Awesome, thank you. So this was a great panel, but before we conclude, I want to reintroduce them because you need to know who is on this stage. To my left, I started to my right when I did the introduction. So for the reintroduction, we have the Greenwood Project. Raise your hand, Greenwood Project, CEO of Greenwood Project. We have Kelly Lopez Clark, Vice President of Chase Wealth Management. To my right, we have Felicia Foster of BMO Managing Director. And then we have Leo Harmon, Chief Investment Officer, Banker of Mesero Financial. And to my far right, we have Annie Seelis, CEO of a woman-owned investment firm, R. Seelis. She is actually joining us from New Jersey this morning. So thank you for traveling to Ch Chicago. And so I'll tell you, as I was up here with this panel, I wasn't a school teacher, but I probably should have been because I always say, shh. But I didn't feel the need to do that this morning because I knew what was going on out in the room, and it is opportunities for attendees, for registrants, to be able to speak with Employers 101. Now let me tell you this, when you look at who's on the stage, they are here today. They are decision makers. We have great opportunities, so if there are residents that are listening that are not here yet, you need to get to UIC Forum immediately. Even if you are not in the financial services industry, as we heard this morning, there are opportunities still for you. You can make a career change, and we are so excited as to what the day may bring. So I thank this panel, and I'll also make a quick mention of the schedule that is before us today. This panel we just had at 10.30 a.m. And then next we are going to hear from our premier sponsor, BMO Harris Bank, as they speak about careers at BMO Harris. And then at 11.15, where are the rooms located? Come on, that's what I'm talking about. Get me together, Ms. Samantha. So room F, that's the 11.15 panel. What time is it right now? So that should be going on. Okay, so that's about to start. It's about to go down. So you're going to come over to my left by the entrance, I believe. She said that's room F. So ask one of the greeters where room F is if you're looking to the, for that. Interview essentials to maximize your career opportunity. And then in room D, there's also something going down. That's the job search strategies that you should know. At 1 p.m., we have room D as well, evaluating your job offer again. If you have any trouble locating these rooms, make sure that you ask someone at the front and they will guide you. We wanna make sure. They're gonna be in a white shirt, B-W-T-T. So just ask them and they'll be able to guide you to that room. So this is a really amazing panel discussion. So many gems were dropped here. And actually, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're like, oh, well, what do you know about financial services? But let me tell you something, y'all. I had an internship when I was in college, and it was at a brokerage firm. I was an assistant trader. It was called Cheevers & Company. I believe it's since been acquired. A minority brokerage firm. And I was a, an intern assistant trader. So before I was doing news, I was actually in the financial services myself. So let me tell you, there are many opportunities. And honestly, I was a journalism major. 
So I was like, I'm not gonna get this. But I guess I nailed my interview. And I, you know, again, you really don't know where life will take you. And I was making some good money at that internship, y'all. So financial <laughs> services is where it's at. And then I ended up going back to news and I started making like $20,000 a year in my first job in Peoria, Illinois. <laughs> so in that first struggle year, okay, Peoria in the house. In that first struggle year, I was like, dang, maybe I need to go back to financial services. In the end, it ended up working out for me. I'm at yeah. the number one news station Woo! in Chicago. But I would be remiss if I did not talk about my roots in starting in the financial services industry. Cheevers and Company, minority owned brokerage firm. It taught me a lot. There was a lot of yelling and screaming sometimes, but it was fun. And we, we ate the best food. And I was running around with my little tickets. Halfway didn't know what I was talking about, but they got me in check. So really, I cannot say enough about what you all are doing here because it really is going to ex expose um, these young people to some great learning. I know we have a panel discussion, but I had to say that. Also, as I was looking at these young students, I was like, man, they should have field trips here. So when you said that, I was like, yes, it's going to be amazing. And I know ABC said we're going to probably in interview some of these young students next year when you do. And so we're we here. We, we, we already got... The, 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 the juices and the creativity flowing. And so, yes, I want to say thank you all so much. I want to thank our panelists because you all were truly amazing. I'm going to do one more shameless plug. This is to my mother. I just want to tell you all about the possibilities and you all having these real life examples I think are important. My mom started working at the Chicago Teachers Pension Fund when she was 19 years old. And she is, she has since risen up to become director of administrative services. And so just to show you, she, you know, she ended up getting, I believe, um, a business degree. So I believe just a two year degree, but she was able to rise up and she is now a director. And I love my mama. My mom taught me my work ethic and truly I am because of who she is. And so again, just another example of what this industry can do for you. And I mean, hey, look at me. <laughs> so, Mama did something right, I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> so thank you all so much for joining. The next panel discussion is at 1230. So meet us back at the stage at 1230. We've got more gems to drop and great people to hear from. I'm so glad that we're doing this. This is really amazing. It really is. And I see so many people networking with their resumes and their nice suits. You all look good. You all really do. Thank you all again. And honestly, you all have been truly tremendous. I know, tremendous. I know you help so many people. So thanks again. And we'll see you back here on the stage at 1230. The City Treasurer of Chicago thanks all of our sponsors, including title sponsor BMO and presenting sponsors Chase and Wintrust, and all of our community partners, exhibitors, and guest speakers for their generous support and participation in building wealth today for tomorrow. Thank you for joining us.